I got distracted. Burning. Welcome back everyone. We are uh, doing a little job off the farm today. I gotta go get the Kodiak here hooked up to the gooseneck again. Then I'm gonna get the tree puller and the grapple and we're gonna go pull out some trees, which I love doing. We unhooked this uh, to go get the dump cart a while back, so it hasn't been hooked up yet and I honestly don't even know where they did unhook it. So we're gonna go find the trailer. I assume it's out on the line here. I see my culprit. Oh, and it looks like it's already loaded up still. That needs a bath. That needs to get sold. That needs to go to another farmyard. That's coming to get picked up. That's what I'm hooking up to. And that land roller needs to get sold. A lot of stuff here that isn't needed or isn't parked in the right spot. Why didn't you yell? I went too far. I can't see a thing out of that little camera. I'm gonna pull like five inches ahead. And if this is like real life, the truck's gonna be in the field. It'll be way too far. I'm all loaded up before I go. Gotta look at a bin that we've been side drawn out of, make sure that it looks okay. And then we will start pulling out of the center into the overhead uh, for a little easier, quicker loading. So I gotta climb a ladder with no cage. And I love heights. Yeah. <sighs> Wended. Okay, beans are still pretty much to the top you can see about three feet in there the cone down starts going to that side draw on the south end i see a little bit of trouble up there in the center but we're gonna take some more out the side before we climb in there and try to level that off i remember like 10 years ago when i was in shape okay going back down so this here is Chris's outfit that he let us borrow, or he brought it up from Iowa. <clears throat> and I love this thing. I've always wanted to run one. I ran it this uh, kind of end of fall here a bunch too, but the nicest part is this front. It's got these kind of shovels on it. And you pinch that jaw together and you can use that to break roots underground if you're going after a tree that's probably too big to be lifting with this bobcat. but. If the tree's there and I've got the uh, the tree puller, you're gonna try it. So, other than that, it squeezes and it pulls everything that uh, the bobcat can lift, which is really nice. There's kind of a minimum maintenance road here, and all the trees on the on the south side are in uh, the new field. So I'm gonna clean them up, and then down this right away. There's a bunch of trees. Oh, the battery died in the camera, even though it said it was full. We're gonna check all the edges of the field and get this all cleaned up. So, nice part, turn on the hydraulic flow. And then I've got control right here. For those of you that haven't ran a, a tree puller, post puller, very slick. Another one of those deals that don't know how you lived without. Okay, hopefully no one hits the Kodiak. 
find a spot to get down into the ditch. This looks steep. Pretty simple. No dirt came with that one. The ground might be just frozen enough to uh, pull the roots out of. I think I'm gonna throw the trees up on this road and then uh, I got the grapple. I'll come back and scoop them all up with the grapple and we're gonna find a spot to pile them up and burn them. This is a uh, quarter minus a grove over there. Might be able to tuck them into that grove or something. But those big trees on the other side of, the, of this little goat path, Nice to get rid of them too so that the storms in the future don't cause trouble but those are the other guys trees so I'm not gonna touch them. Also we ripped this field and it's rough. It's exciting new ground down here. Gonna have to see what this does next year. I know it'll be trouble for soybeans. I got hot soil down here. Stuff we're replanting this year, the IDC issues. I think that's uh, prevalent down here as well so let's see what we can do here. I'm going to try to get you guys set up to watch me work this tree line here. Finding treasures. Look at this. It's an old sickle. Huh. Come out when I ripped up the roots. Well, I wonder what else is in, <laughs> in the line here. Oh gosh. Okay, we'll pluck that out with the bobcat and add her to the pile. This is working really good. This is addicting. I love and hate trees. I love them when they're in the right place. I hate them when they're in the wrong. I think you guys get how it works. Got the rest of these little trees. I'm gonna put you away and try to get some work done. It's gonna be dark in about two hours. I got a lot I gotta do. Well, there I got the sickle section out of there. Oh, it looks like a 25, 30 foot head or so. Probably could have still used it. Looks like it's been spliced once. So that's how they were, unless that's how they were made, but. We'll have to get the hardware off of this, save the blades, can always reuse them. I'm not sure if the rod will be true anymore, but yeah, Doug, you, we can make use of this. We'll, we'll keep this. Maybe we'll put it on the shelf in case we ever go back to a to an old head. You never know. You gotta, gotta hang on to these things. Or we could store it here in the grass. Then you know right where it is. Yeah, maybe we'll do that instead. spot of this field and you see this grass wasn't farmed this year obviously it can be farmed there's no CRP or nothing here but the tile in this field outlets right down here I don't know if you guys can see them two little white flags and it gets it gets real shallow the tile gets really shallow here. there's not a lot of not a lot of dirt on top and my concern is that that outlet, which I assume goes out to an inlet right there, and then I believe one or two more inlets further south. My concern is that line 
has been cut by tillage. I don't know, last fall or two falls ago, but this tile is here. I don't think it's an inlet. It'd be nice if it was an inlet, but I don't think it is. We were told that there, there was no inlet here on the map, so if the tillage came through, God, these sticks. There's too many of them, I didn't try pulling them and now I'm regretting it. If the tillage came through and was doing the headland and caught it and ripped it up, that wouldn't be good. There's also kind of different grass here. God, this is rough. Looks like a line would go out there, but somehow it gets over there too. I just don't know where the tile is. You guys got cockleburs? Got me in the leg. I'll show you where the outlet is. Yeah, I was piling my trees right here because we don't farm it or can't work it up. Oh, I can't burn a tree pile right next to that busted outlet. Okay, so... There's the outlet. Right there, plastic. And then the other one is up there that drains that west side of the field, as far as I know. So that line, this is a culvert for this go path, which maybe they extended the culvert and that's the tile sticking up over there. God, I don't know. It's just too much junk here. That line would come through, I'd assume this little thicker dirt go right to that inlet, so maybe it's not the tile line. We're gonna have to do some digging. Maybe it's just a chunk of tile that is laying there, half frozen into the dirt. That happens, then everyone gets worked up. You get the whole military out here to dig it up and get ready to fix it, bring all the supplies, 14 rolls of tile, and all it is is a little frozen chunk of tile that was left behind. Maybe I'll just pull on it. There's some ruts here from someone going through this when it was wet, doing tillage, more cockleburs. It's just a mess out here. Chet, come clean up your field. Really rattling. You shut the door and the problem goes away. Well, do I pull up on it? It's already wrecked, might as well see what it is. Okay. I didn't want to pull on it. It did feel right. My new theory, final theory, is it branches off of the main line. I showed you guys the outlet too. And they're trying to drain this little pocket here uh, across the goat path because that culvert's maybe crushed. If there's a shovel in the Kodiak, we'll look at it. But I'm running out of daylight and I want to get these trees out of the field. But I'm going to move my current pile away from the mystery tile. All right, guys, it. Uh, Got too dark. Don't know what that tile is. It did gooseneck down and leveled off and I've got no shovel and no daylight to uh, see what's going on. It does look like it branches over to where I assume the main line is. So we'll have to come back and work on that. This farm or this field is quite a ways away from the farm. So that is not ideal, but we will pick this up again tomorrow. And we'll see you guys then. All right, it is the next day here, and I was sitting adjusting field boundaries um, from some fence lines that we kind of took out and trees and whatnot on uh, a couple different fields this fall. And it hit me, I never went out and mapped um, one of these fields that we were waiting for the manure to kind of dry up and not smell so bad. Uh, and now I think is a good time to do that. Doesn't really. After a couple weeks, it doesn't smell nearly as bad, and plus it might be a little frozen out there. So, you guys have seen me map before. One thing I don't know if I really explained, um, and I don't know if this is, it's the way I do it, as usual. It's the way I do it. So I put pretty much an empty file off of our John Deere Op Center. Uh, for those of you that run the, the Deere Op Center, you'll know what I'm talking about here. Um, I create an empty file so there's no fields, um, you have to put a implement and a tractor or a vehicle. I've created one for the side-by-side, -side, which is what I'm mapping in again. Got the globe back on. Uh, that has all my measurements on it, so I don't have to re-put those in. But the file basically has an operator, the side-by-side, -side, 
and nothing else. And then I go out, create the field, you can name it whatever you want because you can just rename it in the computer. And then when I download this back into the computer, I put it under the right uh, client like Larson Farms or My Farms and I put it under the right landlord or whatever the farm level is and then I can rename the field, uh, whatever I prefer. So kind of what works for me, I don't really know if you just went in and like wiped the 2630 and created everything out in the field like I just said and then just offloaded that. I don't know what that looks like because when I do this it gives it a file name in there so that when I export I can look for that file name and know exactly what I'm pulling off of the 2630 and I don't, what's the word, add anything we don't want to the op center. It is only the boundary that I just created or the tile line that I just drove um, because you don't want to you don't want to screw up the op center try to keep that clean so currently imported so pretty simple plug in the USB import this is the file I just created I don't know if you guys can see any of this you can transfer that does its thing I will go outside we'll calibrate the uh, TCM or the globe that's on here so that it knows where it is relative to where I'm driving uh, you have to do that every time you take the globe on and off or off and on that is ready to go yeah that's what I like this here we just wired it into under the seat uh, that would have been about a year ago or so or this spring when this thing showed up that's wired in and the harness goes up the back to the globe and we got our we got our own little mounting bracket uh, for those of you that haven't seen it, it's just kind of bolted in to the existing side by side, the existing side by side brackets. So that's actually really slick. And then just weld on the uh, John Deere globe bracket. They have a name for that. I don't remember what it is. So we're ready to go. I'm going to get some water and gloves and probably some towel flags and Go do what I think is the last field, and we'll be ready for next spring. I wanted to show you guys this too. So, the machine was on that drive that I just uploaded, and now when I select it, it auto-populates my measurements for where the globe is. Because why measure every time when you don't have to? Well, it's very bumpy out here, but I'm just wrapping up the uh, exterior boundary driving the whole outside of the field and I created the four AB curves which I have minimal faith in uh, AB curve auto track line one for each side of the field and we're back to the corner I started in stop that Trying a little more for the boundary and we are This approach turned out pretty good. I think the planner will be able to just jump across from that field to this one. That's like 75 feet long. That'll work. Getting rid of clay at the farm. Always a good spot to use them is on the approaches. That way they're nice and slick when it rains. There really isn't a whole lot of straight edges to this field. This one goes along the tar road, so you'd think it would be straight, but the ditch, which has been dug out over the years, causes the field to weave slightly. I'm going to create a straight track there so we can do at least the headland if we want. Maybe over the years we can straighten that out. This goes along a driveway that has a lot of curves to it. There's a grove on the east end. So we're going to farm this east and west. The north line is the straightest. It won't work to just do an, a straight track and set the planter down and go. But at least we can build off of that so we don't have as many uh, point rows. We'll, picture frame the field is how we normally plant uh, two planter passes 120 feet around the whole thing and then start the the straight track or the main rows inside of that and let the planter uh, swath control con you know shut off the rows if you're overlapping uh, but that makes it easy to spray and easy to combine to open up the field and then you just got the main rows to take out there's also a tree line in the middle of the field uh, for kind of a snow block which 
at least it goes with the main rows. It'll be pretty easy to farm around. Uh, just a small obstacle, so not the worst thing at all. But we're gonna find the tile inlets out here, mark them, and uh, get back to the farm. You know, I had heard talk about some interesting inlets out here. This takes the cake. That is a uh, old rim. Some bars welded across it. Going down to a 90 that goes that way. That's shallow and interesting. Planter ain't gonna like that. Tile line goes that way. Don't don't hit that. It's got a good flag at least. Should be able to see the white stick. Hey, well, it's mapped. So I'm making the straight track on the north line here, which it is a fence line, decently straight. Not gonna work out the greatest. Gonna have to be weaving in and out with the plant a little bit. But back in that corner, um, I set the A point. I guess when I do it, I don't set it right in the corner because usually the corners tend to have a weird little jag at the end one way or the other. So get up to the true fence line and uh, start your aid. Now if you're farming square corners, like up northwest here, then the corners are probably true, but we don't get that. We got lakeshore fence lines that are three feet higher in the field, trees, houses, old equipment parked out at the edge of the field, rock piles, deer, we got everything, you gotta weave around. But yeah, setting that, and then we're gonna wrap this field up by with the mark, mapping those inlets and uh, we're gonna get out of here. I got distracted. Burning. I see my next victim. Let's do some burning. That was a failed attempt. It's actually really thin out there. We burnt this last year and, oh, it ain't gonna work. I've got good wind. All right, I'm gonna stick to farming. I'm not made for burning. Maybe I'll be a good firefighter. Just have to show up and the fires will go out. Well, it's got some life left in it. This uh, field surrounds a slough, so that's why I burnt with the wind. I'm not worried about it going anywhere. Yeah. Burn up the water hem. There you go. Cook all them seeds. We might get something out of this. That uh, east side, that's pretty thin. We'll let it do its thing here. Now if the wind, I just need a tornado right here. Just burn everything. Real hot. It's gonna put itself out soon, I imagine. I'm back, Brody. Hello. Why are the lights off? Look at what I found on my on my little short vacation with Duggo. We th he's worse of an influence than you are. Was he bad? He was very bad. I, and I'm you apparently not as good as you because I couldn't influence <laughs> him to buy a sports car. You gotta work harder. <laughs> you gotta buy it, Doug. You gotta yeah. buy it. <laughs> Maybe he'll go back. He found a really, really, really nice 392 burnt orange charger. He should go back. And he, he's really tempted. He should go back and buy it. He should. Doggo, you want to show him what you bought? You want to see what my desk looks like after I opened up this here powder keg of what you fuzz? Mean? My. Is this a Christmas gift? It is. But they booby trapped That's cancerous. The <laughs> That's asbestos. <laughs> Spesto. My Spesto. nose, why is my nose getting plugged up? <laughs> peanut butter. <laughs> it's got peanut butter in it. Oh good, more chocolate. What is, what is this? It's caramel. It's got a big butcher knife in it. Hold this. There, you can have that. Merry Christmas. Oh my gosh, there's a hundred bucks in there I too. see you took them back, huh? Yeah, I sold the camera. Okay, well good. Farm was getting... And, and we're back, we're back from our little vacation. 
And uh, I was trying to show them how dad's an equally bad influence as these guys are I when shopping. Means, but he's not very good. Oh, yeah. Well, when you see stuff that you, you just I always know. This is. It's a spoon. For what? For Eric. Sampling corn. That's what you're going to use to eat your lunch. That, that would work. Okay, well, we'll just have to see how this goes. One chocolate, no one caramel per person. <laughs> <laughs> oh, your brace is I, that no, I can't. I can't have them. Stay. Stay away. Uh, that's going to be bad. <laughs> so these guys all know how this started to become. Do you want to explain how this started, Brody? We found this really nice maroon pickup. Oh, yeah. And it was a one ton. Or do you have to maybe was, back up a little was, more before you even started looking when Brody was driving the 91, which is kind of what hopefully this can replace. <laughs> this you, is a big upgrade. You, what did you do to the 91? You were using it. I believe we were this in year? my field. No, it would have been last. Oh, that was this, I don't know snow. if this took the transmission out. I don't yeah, know if this that's is go tiling. <laughs> this is maybe too nice for tiling. <laughs> yeah. But everything else that that 91 tried to do. So I went to go look at this maroon pickup and it was priced what I was very satisfied with and with the mileage. Get halfway there, guy finally calls me back, it was a dealer. Uh, long story short, they said nothing about it had a rebuilt engine, it had 40,000 miles, uh, it had a salvage title. It was your standard mm. Ram pickup. Oh. Okay. Standard. Well, nothing about was <laughs> Wait, any of that information was on the on the internet, so that just turned into disappointment. And I've been looking for another one ton for pulling seed tenders and stuff alongside the Kodiak, so we don't have to use the 91 to pull uh, the skid anything. loader in the spring and anything with the gooseneck. And so that's where this came about because it was just disappointment with the other one, and it got me very upset. And then I started looking at that mile range, <laughs> and then I just started feeling ripped off because of, of what a 100,000 mile, one ton dually pickup costs. So then I just, you know, went for the moon, and you know, we got something so nice and that we, we can't even use it. <laughs> it's gonna look good sitting there. It's a wash though. Yeah, it definitely does. 2022 with 22,000 miles on it, 3,500 Longhorn. His dream pickup, because he's in love with Long the Yellowstone. Horn, yeah. No, I'm, it's an okay show, but the vocabulary <laughs> they use is a little rough sometimes. <laughs> you want to tell him about that? He is just obsessed with that. It don't have a hub cover. Cover. The reason being there is no hub cover is because it's got wheel spacers, because it's aftermarket tires, factory rims, aftermarket tires, which are wider, so they were kissing. Well, the hub cover don't fit the wheel space or lug nuts, so he's really bothered by that. I am bothered. That's <laughs> got to be fixed. I can't have that. That and that DMI bumper that I've hung on to for 30 years. That's it's not going DMI. on this. I can just see it. <laughs> oh, <laughs> no. I think I think stock is just fine. I'll go. Did from hooking up with no, the no, no. Oh, that's okay, guys. <laughs> Anybody wreck anything? Like if their fender gets tore off because it's so big when you're going through it? I'm, I'm not, not buying. I'm not driving, man. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, some lawn care guy in the cities own this and... Get me his number. I'm going to get them caps and heat. then we'll just put tape around these lug nuts so that they fit when they put the cap on. That That's got work. the deal, right? The lug nuts are different? I believe because of so. The, we could probably find something online. Where's your little gooseneck ball? Lever? It's in the back seat, so it's got the, well, then we were shopping for Christmas gifts for Grandma. So you're but touching it's got the, the paint ring. there. Don't scratch that when you put your elbow up there. Wow. wow. Yeah, so I might have to daily this for a while. <laughs> you won't even get it in your garage. No, it's, I don't know where we're going to even park it. It's so long. Well, going in this, nice. You're going to have to get a new spot. Yeah, so it's got the removable ball, which I like, so that the eight-foot box, we can use it for other jobs. Lots of storage. Too much. Uh, this is a dumb question, but 
If you want to put a raised up plate or what are them things for? I think that's for like camper those fifth wheel. Yeah. The shorter, which we don't the have. shorter gooseneck looking deals. Duck once necks. once mom makes dad buy a camper, then he's got his whole setup. He's here. getting a motorhome. I thought you were a. getting into horses. No, no way. <laughs> mm. I think you have to get into cows if you have a pickup like this. <laughs> This, uh, it's a there should be a step ladder <laughs> bracket holder. There's, you're standing next to a step that's just as tall. Uh, don't want to scratch that. <laughs> this pickup, never get used. <laughs> I will say, I, I may have bought something here that is so nice. unrealistic that it hurts me, but I mean, the interior is unbelievable. Brody, you got dirt in here already. I wasn't in there. Chris. I don't Chris. have dirt He's, on my shoes. It's his last day. He yeah, it's Chris's anymore. last day, unfortunately. Oh, oh. And uh, I've got was... him looking for mud flaps for this. What? That'll actually, I was worried that we were going to have to get a whole new nozzle down at the truck uh, diesel tank. The dyed diesel? But this has got the big. Yeah, and it's got 50 gallon capacity. I drove it all the way home from the cities and. I still can go another 600 miles before refueling. <laughs> well, I can't believe that they got that. Don't mind me. I'm just sneaking up behind you. You're making me I was going to show him an angle. <laughs> it's not important. Well, I'll catch good. you later when he's sleeping. It's good. So there's a few uh, reasons. Kodiak is awesome. That is not leaving. That is a workhorse. But for long road trips, as you've seen last winter, it is not very comfy. And it's only two-wheel drive for the winter. So now we got four-wheel drive. <laughs> another truck to use in the spring and well I can't believe how much we use the Kodiak so I'm sure this one will get used just as much yeah. Yeah. big ones it does have mud flaps where right oh that's cute yeah, that should block everything <laughs> what do you see check them nothing yeah he is so confused. What is that off. big thing? <laughs> what what what's in there? It's a blind spot. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. <laughs> that's what I found it to be. Yeah. What's all that mumbling? He's underneath looking at stuff. Don't run him over. Can <laughs> I fix the problem with the running boards? Yeah, so it used to have auto folding running boards and it beep was beeping me beeping at me the whole way home. And so Brody pulled the fuse on it. Oh, Didn't you? that she was beeping? I oh, did. it was so annoying. Are Every five kidding? minutes, bling, it might service, it's running still might, It still might do it. I have no idea. So the guy that owned it just drove it that way for a year? Maybe that's why he traded it. I can't handle this beeping. This looks like something that uh, you would drive. I should, but <laughs> I can't. Uh, it actually ain't too hard to get in, I guess. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think with that being shown and I'm back at the farm thanks goodness we and dad were gone for a little bit you'll see more about that later this winter and uh, I think that's it for this video what do you think Brody I suppose <laughs> <laughs> all right guys thanks for watching I uh, hope you enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one